our very first property. This is how we got into the real estate game and we were so nervous about buying this property. You're crazy, don't do it, the market's going to tank. So I went home and I, and I just Googled how to, be, how to become wealthy, how to become <laughs> nice. rich, you know, how do people do it? And real estate just kept coming back up over and over mm -hmm. and over. And so we bought it for 129,000. It used to be just a one bedroom and it sat on the market for a little bit of time. Nobody really wanted such a small house. I'm in Brantford today and we're meeting up with Sarah Larby and we're going back to where it all started, her very first property. Let's check it out. Hey Sarah. Hi. How's it going? Awesome. I'm, I'm super excited to show you my very first property. This is how we got into the real estate game and we were so nervous about buying this property but you know what? It was what started it all and what helped us get to having absolutely nothing, tons of, you know, like liabilities, I would say, not a whole lot of assets. And you know, within, this was in 2013, within just a few short years have completely changed our financial picture. So let me show you inside. Yeah. Absolutely. So I will say that the decor inside is absolutely amazing. My tenant David did such a great job. He lives here with his grandma, and they took a house that, um, you know, it was nice, but it was not beautiful. And he totally made it awesome. And I just I'm excited to show you guys because you can have good tenants and you can have bad tenants, but you can still have good tenants that don't really, you know, take pride into where they're living. But you can see that David. David has pride and really from every single small detail has thought of absolutely everything. I think he actually probably stained this as well. <laughs> so it wasn't stained before, I'm looking at it now, but let's go in. What originally sparked your interest in real estate investing, Sarah? Yeah, so we went to the bank one day and met with a financial advisor and she asked us, you know, what your what are your assets mm -hmm. and what are your liabilities and we didn't even know actually what those terms meant. Oh yeah. And we had been working for a few years and I decided to go home because I was really embarrassed um, that we had been working for a few years and had no assets, really like we thought our cars were assets back gotcha. in the day. And we had, you know, a bunch of liabilities. So I went home and I and I just Googled how to be how to become wealthy, how to become <laughs> nice. rich, you know, how do people do it? And real estate just kept coming back up over and over mm -hmm. and over. And I'm like, there's gotta be something to it. Of course there's stocks and that kept coming yeah. back up as well, starting a business, but you know, real estate for whatever reason just seemed like the easiest of those three options. And so I just became super obsessed with learning everything that I could about investing and decided to go ahead and buy the smallest, cheapest house I could find that I could afford. Um, but it didn't take a couple years. My boyfriend, um, because of his, um, his job, he sees the worst of the worst and didn't necessarily want to uh, get something where a tenant would come in and trash the place, gotcha. have to go to the board, and all of that stuff. And so it took a little bit of convincing, but I think now he's super happy and on board. But um, you know, this is this is how we got started here. I love it. So was there a resource, a book, a video, a course that you took that really gave you guys the confidence to move forward, or was it just self-studying? It was Googling. It was Googling yeah. a lot. And you know what kept coming back up was bigger pockets. Okay. And yeah. reading those blogs. And then over time, I started discovering books. And I didn't even know that there were such things as networking events back in mm -hmm. the day. And I mean, it wasn't even that long ago, but I just didn't even know where to start. And so bigger pockets was that piece for me. And then I realized that they had podcasts. And so yeah. I listened to podcasts instead of the radio and instead of the TV, I figured, okay, you know, I'm working full time. So how do I make the rest of my eight hours? Because you sleep for eight yeah. hours, you work for eight hours. So like, how do I make the rest of those eight hours productive? Mm -hmm. And so I cut out all those things and then just started trying to learn from the car, from driving to and from work. And over time, you just absorb it and you get better. But the biggest thing I think is actually doing it. And that is how I learned the most is by just getting in there and just doing it and learning from those mistakes. Yeah, by just jumping into this property specifically and learning through the school of hard knocks. That's it. Love it. So as you can see, everything is just so nicely put together. We bird this. But it was a few years afterwards. So when we first bought this house, we bought it for 129000 
and literally like because we didn't have even the concept of being able to use equity when we didn't have equity anyways. We ended up scraping our pennies together. I had two jobs uh, at one point. I cashed out my vacation to have enough money to put the 20% down to buy our first rental property. So it's, um, you know, it, like it definitely is like one of the, the houses I like the most. I think just because it signifies, you know, how we started changing our lives. So um, this is the living room here. The flooring is original. Um, this used to be just a one bedroom house and I think that's why it sat on the market for a long time and why the price might have been you know, a great steal for us. We ended up just making two small bedrooms out of it. So you can take a look inside over here. You've got enough room for a queen. I believe that's a queen. And then this room is a little bit smaller. There's a cat in there as well, but you can still, um, as you can see, fit a bed. There's a window. Used to, this used to actually be the closet here. <laughs> so we opened that up. And this kitchen, so where we spent a lot of money on was fixing this part up a little bit. So we. All right, Sarah, let's break down the numbers behind your very first property. Okay, sure. So this one we purchased, and it took some time to purchase this one. We had to look at a lot of them, and I think we saw this place two or three times before we oh, decided okay. to actually do it. And so we bought it for 129000 It used to be just a one-bedroom, and it sat on the market for a little bit of time. Nobody really wanted such a small house. Mm -hmm. But um, the original rent, so we had a renter already lined up, and the original rent was $800 a month. Didn't really know what I was doing back then, probably could have gotten a little bit more, and I was paying the gas. So the other tenant was paying all the other utilities, but in that $800, there's about $80 of gas that goes okay. into that. So my rent really was like 720, 20. which is, you know, that's pretty low, even back mm -hmm. in 2013. The renos that we did, it's a little bit actually over time. So originally we made this into a two bedroom, we did the roof, and when the last tenants moved out, it was um, definitely needed to have a little refresh. So mm -hmm. we got a new kitchen put in, a new bathroom vanity, um, repainted everything, and put about, I would say, all in all, with the roof and everything like that, $15,000 of renos over the last few years. The new current rent now plus utilities is fourteen twenty five, and we just got it appraised actually um, back in two thousand eighteen, just last year, and it appraised for two sixty. So part of it is going to be the reno, but part of it is also the area the itself. Market. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, when you bought originally, did you know or suspect that this area would appreciate or gentrify over time? When I bought this originally, I just wanted to get in the game and in the market. I really didn't see beyond the fact that I was going to rent and the tenant was already chosen mm -hmm. and this is where they wanted to live. That was my concept yeah. <laughs> of real estate investing back then. Um, but I would say after the second and the third property, we really started doing our research. And I wish I bought more in Homedale. Homedale, mm -hmm. now, this, you know, something like this, I mean, you can't really, really even find anything that sits on the market for too long. But I would say the prices, usually, I see them starting at 300, 350, 400. Like, it's not uncommon. Mm -hmm. This area is actually even more so sought after just based on the school zones in the area than the last house that we just went to um, in Eagle Place. Eagle Place is still a good area. This is more of a desirable if you had to gotcha. pick between the two. So you decided to make the leap to become a real estate investor. What did friends and family think and say when you said, hey, I'm going to get into real estate? Yeah, you know, for me, I was actually pretty lucky. My parents are entrepreneurs, and so they don't necessarily have a nine to five job, and they were always pushing us to try to do more. And so when I suggested real estate, they were actually pretty supportive. So they didn't really know much about it, but they said, hey, you know what, go, go ahead and try it and see what happens. And so I think that was well, that was great. And then Matt's parents um, were local in Brantford. We we're not too far, and you know, they, also encouraged us. I mean, I don't think they understood it either, but we um, we didn't get those comments of like, you're crazy, don't do it, the market's going to tank. So we didn't get that. We, we got some support, which I think was really good and really helpful. But, you know, when it comes to my friends, I think they, they just didn't understand. Mm -hmm. um, but some of them were still supportive nonetheless. I think you're, you're an inv when you're an investor and you're thinking of doing something like this, you're thinking outside of the box. You're not you know, going to work, coming home, watching TV, doing your stuff. Like you're really changing 
how you want to be financially free or how you want to be financially. And a lot of people don't even think that far, right? They spend more time planning a vacation than planning their future. So yes, my friends were supportive, um, but you know, I still think that some of them to this day still don't really understand, yeah. but that's okay, that's okay. And, and you know what the really cool thing is, over time with networking, your friends actually become investors that you yeah. meet. And so I mean, I look at it and I look at you know, the past five years who I hang out with the most, they're mm -hmm. actually investors at this point. And of course I still have some high school friends and some yeah. university friends that are awesome, but you know, like the, the people that are similar and have similar mindsets, I find that you just gravitate towards them and you just spend more time with them. This kitchen, so where we spent a lot of money on was fixing this part up a little bit. So we had a uh, tenant prior and a lot of the cupboards were just really grungy and just worn. And um, so we just ended up paying, I think it was like four or five thousand dollars to redo this kitchen, um, kept the appliances, kept the flooring, uh, we just added a little bit of flooring here and then we changed the bathroom slightly. It looks beautiful, actually I haven't seen it yet. We just got a new vanity but kept the flooring the same and uh, it's just a small house actually. The laundry is just right in here so this is probably like five or six hundred square feet. Like it is tiny. Like literally we bought what we could afford <laughs> at that point in time. And um, you know the cool thing is that so when we first bought this we were renting it at eight hundred dollars and um, the tenant was not paying gas because they couldn't uh, get the gas under their name. Long story short, we didn't even realize how much rent was going. This is actually uh, Homedale, so really nice area of Brantford. But we could have gotten more. And we didn't do that research originally. We just decided that, you know what, the tenant is going to pay this price because that's what they can afford. And, you know, we figured out based on, you know, our mortgage, taxes, insurance, etc., this would cover it. And we could have like gotten four or five hundred dollars more if we had just done a little research in the beginning to figure out what the market rents were. And um, anyways, long story short, so this was in 2013 and um, when the last tenants moved out, we ended up doing the renovations and then that's when we got the new rent and the refinance. So the new rent right now is $14.25 plus all the utilities, I don't have to pay the gas anymore, anything like that. And also the appraisal came back at two sixty. Even for just a small house. Two sixty bought it for one twenty nine and this was back in two thousand and thirteen. But you know, today in ten years from now, today's dollars will seem really cheap as well. You can't buy anything at, at this point in time unless it's completely a tear down for that price in Brantford. I mean you're probably looking at two fifty to three hundred starting, but in 10 years from now, that 250 to 300 starting, you're gonna be looking at a lot more. So if you're thinking about it and saying, oh, well, you know what, she got in the, the right time. Today is still the right time because appreciation does happen over time. Yes, you might have a down year or two, but over time, you're gonna be much better off. So if you haven't started yet, get in the game today. In five years from now, in 10 years from now, you're gonna be extremely happy that you did. Sarah. This is your first property we're staying in right now. Back in 2013, that's when you bought it, right? It's yes. six years later now. You have nine properties, uh, 12 doors, I think. What Did you have that vision in place from day one? Has it evolved? What does that look like? It definitely has evolved. And in the beginning, I thought I needed to buy just 10 properties because I'd ended up going to some seminar. I can't remember what it was. It wasn't about real estate, but there was somebody there talking about it. And they said, if you just buy like a house a year for 10 years and you have 10, you're set, which is, is true. But when I met my mortgage broker, like the, the stuff that you actually learn is not that we need 10, we actually needed a lot more because of our income expectations and what we Got want it. as income. And so that is a great exercise to do. I don't think you should just, and I shouldn't say should, but I don't think people want to just say, I'm going to buy 10 just to buy 10. I think it's, it's all about income. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you need to set yourself up? And if it's $5,000 a month, work it backwards. If it's $2,000 a month, work it backwards. And everybody's number is different. So yes, it went from 10 to about 29. Oh, okay. Because I wanted a higher number, but it doesn't yeah. mean that you have to have a higher number. And you know, by doing the burr, 
in this strategy, you can accelerate that as well mm -hmm. a lot faster. And so absolutely, it evolves. And did I have a plan when I first bought this? No, I just wanted to get into the game because at the end of the day, it's about taking action. Mm -hmm. it, it's time in the market, not time in the market, right? As a lot of us have heard. That's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Super excited to show you the properties and this one specifically because this is how I got started in this real estate investing game. And if you wanted to reach out, if you had more questions, feel free to email me, sarah at sarahlarby.com or you can check out my website, sarahlarby.com or come out to the right club. If you have not been to our club yet and you're in the Burlington or surrounding area, send me a message and your first one is on me complimentary ticket for your first event so feel free to come out and again sarahlarby.com i just wanted to get into the game because at the end of the day it's about taking action mm -hmm. it, it's time in the market not time in the market right as a lot of us have heard that's it um okay if you don't mind do you have a roadmap like would we be able to talk about that like Okay, Sarah, you're at nine properties now. The goal is 29. What does that look like? Yeah, we can, I can make it up. Okay. <laughs> That's good. So, so essentially, and just to like, let you know how it works and how the 29 is, it doesn't have to be 29, but it's your, um, your, going to be regardless once all your properties are paid off mm -hmm. if you're averaging let's call it fourteen fifteen hundred dollars a month and you're and you're um paying still your taxes and stuff like that let's just say you're paying 40 percent you're gonna get 60 okay. percent and my goal was 25 grand a month okay so i can talk about that if you yeah. want but you know is my goal can i can i leave my job right now yeah absolutely am i at 25k a month no but mm -hmm. you know at the end of the day Awesome. You know, it's, you don't need 25. Yeah. <laughs> we need 25 for both of us, so. And I don't think Matt's leaving too soon. Yeah. Would, like, that was just super candid. Could we have that just at the end? Do you sure. think, would that yeah, be yeah. fine? Because, like, I think that'd be kind of a cool way to end the video. Yeah. Just have that. So, Spencer, you heard that? <laughs> okay. Awesome. Um.